Well, good afternoon. I'm saying good afternoon. It is afternoon as I am filming this tutorial here. However, we are doing a tutorial. But this tutorial is actually giving you a sneak preview as to what I'm going to be bringing tomorrow to Hobby Maker. So therefore, that's uh, essentially time frame is going to be working if you know the date. So I am filming this on Wednesday, the 11th of October. So we are day three in our 18th birthday celebrations at Crafters Companion. So therefore, that means tomorrow is going to be Thursday, the 11th of October. And I have got four cracking shows coming your way on Hobby Maker tomorrow. What we have got is we've got shows at one o'clock where I'm going to be on with Rosie, three o'clock I'm going to be on with Rosie, six o'clock I'm going to be on with Dave and seven o'clock I'm going to be on with Dave as well. So with these ones here we are essentially the six o'clock and seven o'clock is two hours straight however it is two separate shows. Now when it comes to what we've got tomorrow we've kind of well, essentially we've got three launches and uh, well we've got we've got two launches brand new launches celebrating birthday of course we've got a launch for the UK something that has never been seen before though you may see them trickle through within some goodie bags I'll talk you through that just in a moment and then we've also got an additional hour when it comes to wild at heart which when it comes to the date today being the wednesday the 11th leanne is there launching the wild at heart collection on hobby maker so tomorrow our main our fir first launch the main one that i'm really excited is our everyday border nest and dies you know how much i love border dies nest and dies absolutely love them adore them and these are so much fun now you may be familiar of course when it comes to our christmas and halloween ones well this is now our every everyday ones but of course you're going to be able to mix and match all of those inner frames when it comes to Christmas and Halloween if you want to you can do that but when it comes to the brand new everyday sets that we've got tomorrow of course you can mix and match which again I'll show you in a moment because I've rustled up a few boards just to give you an indication as to all the different configurations when it comes to the collection but that's going to be at one o'clock with Rosie and then at three o'clock as I said I'm going to be back but that's going to be the hour with the wild at heart what we'll probably do is we'll bring in a few of the uh, incredible deals that are maybe left over from Sarah on Monday when it comes to the birthday launch takeover on Hobby Maker. And then at six o'clock, it's going to be six o'clock's the Totally Tiffany special. So maybe some items that you've not seen before. We'll maybe bring in a few items as well from, of course, uh, birthday launch on Hobby Maker with the takeover with Sarah. And then at seven o'clock, because although it's two hours, uh, two hours back to back, uh, or an hour back to back, given two hours, is two separate shows where the seven o'clock is going to be the uh, the launch of something that's not been seen in the UK. Apart from recently, if you remember, remember that thank you cut in car tutorial that I done that I'd said had not really been seen in the UK. It's just been stateside and a couple of them started to, you know, just drift into mystery bags and goodie bags. Well, we've actually got the UK launch on um, Thursday. Thursday but myself seven o'clock so the actual full launch of those ones they're going to be launching with myself at seven o'clock on Hobby Maker so really really good day really really busy day with uh, launches you know continuing that 18th birthday celebration with Sarah there with the big paper pad bundle of course yesterday and then Leanne there today when it comes to the um, what day what's over Wednesday so I'm all I'm all out of a day yes I'm trying, I'm trying to think now. Yes, yeah. Sarah was there yesterday. Leanne's there today. That's right, yep. And then I'm going to be there tomorrow with some more new launches as well. So it is. It's going to be a lot of fun. Really, really cannot wait. Really can't wait for this one. But what we're, what we're going to do is we're, going to, we're still going to do a tutorial in this. So if you are watching this just before I launch them, then this is, of course, going to be a sneak peek. If you, get, if you watch this after you've bought them, then, of course, you can come along and you can just replicate what I do. Maybe you want to change the colours. I'm going to be using a photo of my beautiful friend Heather and also her gorgeous wee one Lula as well so when you come to make whatever you're going to make if you're replicating me or what I do then of course you just need to change the photo but let's have a look at these ones here because we're going to have a look at the actual the the packaging we'll have a look at the packaging and I'll show you the boards that we've got here because when it comes to these we've got the Amour. Now, this is the one that we're going to do a demonstration with. So this one is giving you the love hearts. You've got the swirls. You've then also got your seasoned leaves. Now, these ones here would work really well with the Halloween ones as well. And actually, even some of the Christmas ones as well. But maybe go in with the blues and the, the greys. You've then got kaleidoscope of butterflies. 
We've then using the entwined vines, which again would be another really good one for your Halloween. We've then got Regency swirls, and then we've also got the rose garden. So we've got these ones here that we're going to be launching. Now, when it comes to these ones here, if you've not seen them before, these have many different ways. Well, you think of a few different ways in which you can use them, but there's actually many ways that I'm going to show you on the boards that I've created. So you've got your outer frame die. So your outer frame die cuts out and it cuts the detail, but it stays within the centre layer of the card. You can then, of course, come along and use that centre one, which is then going to cut directly into that centre as well, because there is no cutting edge on the outside edge. If you want to release that, then you've got two sizes of your rectangles. These are also good then to create your rectangle aperture within the middle here. Now, because of that, that gives you so much scope and so much craftability. So let's bring in, I'm going to zoom out, I probably need to zoom out a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in our kaleidoscope of butterflies. So this is, this is not just the one way that you can use them. So if you cut out your outer frame here, which will sense it will give you this one here, you're going to be lovely, left with this framed aperture. So you've got one way. If you use it, just the one die on its own, then of course this is what it's going to look like. Now, if you use it in conjunction with that mid frame, this is what it's going to look like. If you use the outer frame with the largest rectangle, this is what it's going to look like. And then if you use your outer frame, but with a smaller rectangle, then this is then going to give you another way. So you've got your frame and then you've got your four ways. But then maybe you just want to use the inner frame on their own. So if you use the inner frame on its own, cut into whatever size cardstock that you've got, it's going to cut into your cardstock. So you're giving you that lovely inner butterfly aperture. Now, if you use the inner frame with a small rectangle, this is what it's going to look like. If you use the butterfly with the large rectangle, this is what it's going to look like. If you use just the two rectangle dies on their own, it's going to give you that lovely, light, delicate frame. If you use the large rectangle on its own, you've got a lovely mat. If you use the small rectangle on its own, you've got a smaller mat. But then, of course, if you're cutting them out, your cardstock, that then gives you your frame. So if you're using the largest of the rectangle, of course, then that gives you a frame within whichever size cardstock you use. And then the same again when it comes to the smaller rectangle. But that's all very well using each die on its own. But if we go back to our kaleidoscope of butterflies. So if you use just one of the outside dies, so I've chosen when it comes to the boards to do the kaleidoscope of butterflies, you can then bring in all of the other inner apertures. So you can then use the kaleidoscope of butterfly, use, of course, one of the inners, kaleidoscope of butterfly, butterfly with another inner, kaleidoscope of butterfly, inner kaleidoscope of butterfly your initial additional one kaleidoscope of butterfly and then your additional one and then think of the other ways that you can keep taking that because then of course that could be you could then be using the outer frame of rose garden and then use all the different permutations that you can create when it comes to all the different frames and inner frames that you've got as well. So that's what you can do when it comes to each individual set, all of that and all of that. But then if you start to then use the outer frames with all of the additional, it's just my Gemini plates, with all of the additional inner frame dies, then that gives you even more ways. So, you know, you've still got your kaleidoscope of butterfly with the kaleidoscope of butterfly inner frame. So you'll have that one together and then using the kaleidoscope of butterfly outer frame each time, but then using the additional five inner frames. So this really does blow your mind. It's not until you really start to cut your dies and you start to see the different configurations. Because I started to do it just for a couple of cuts and then I was like, but then I can do it this way. 
And then I was like, oh, I can do it this way. And then I can do it this way. And then that's what gave me the, the idea to do the extended boards, just to really show you all the different permutations that you can create when it comes to, of course, one individual set. And then, of course, start using the outer frames, but with all the different inner frames. So, so many, so many different ways. There's loads and loads and loads. And when you see the actual value that you've got, the the, the price when it comes to, to Hobby Maker, it's absolutely exquisite. Of course, you're going to get your free gift as well when it comes to the purchase. So that's going to be fab. Of course, I should just say as well, you know, it is stock dependent when it comes to the free gift. And then it is also just for the birthday event too. Just in case you're watching this later on down the line. But let's just dive straight in. Let's just dive straight in and let's do some playing here. So what I'll do is, what we're going to make is we'll do it into a card. But then I will also show you how you can then pop it into a home decor frame. I'm, I'm going to kind of recreate it on Hobby Maker as well tomorrow. But I just wanted to give you a really good indication. I'm going to use a little bit of inking as well for the background. Because on the later show, I think it's going to be the 7 o'clock show. I've got a lovely set of shimmer ink pads, duet ink pads. And then I've also got... Um, so what, reactive doesn't really matter at this moment in time. But I've got Shimmer and then I've got Duet ink pads. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of colouring and crafting when it comes to that. Right, let's dive in. Let's have a look. And then let's take our... We're going to go in the Amour. I love this one. Now, I'm going to go, when it comes to the colours, and I'll explain why I've chosen the colours that I've gone for. I'm going to go for Fuchsia. And I'm also going to go for a grey. So we're going to go for fuchsia and we're going to go for grey. And then that is because if I bring in my photo. So I'm going to come in with my photo. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a lot better. So this is from earlier on this year. Um, you got my friend Heather, her gorgeous wee one Lula. And this was actually the very first time that I met Lula very first time that I met Lula. So when it comes to the colour choices of the cardstock that I'm going to be using, the reason that I've gone for the fuchsia and I've gone for the grey is my top is grey. Okay, it's a light grey, but it's still grey. And then Heather's top that she's got here is that gorgeous fuchsia colour. So that is the colour choices that I've gone for when it comes to the colours that I'm using. I'm going to incorporate some white as well just to make it stand out and make it pop, as they say. But that is giving you the uh, that's giving you the insight as to how I've chosen the colours that I've gone for. I've just printed this out on photo paper and let's crack on. So let's start off with my main outer layer. So I'm going to come in with my guillotine here. And as I said, what I'll do as well is I will show you within this video, but I'll show you more when it comes to Hobby Maker tomorrow, how you can then use these dies with your photos, family photos, and then pop them into frames for a piece of home decor. So I can show you that just shortly as well. So that is, I've gone in for the grey here, and this is, I've cut it to five by seven. Going for five by seven, and I'm going to bring in some of that fuchsia. I've just put it out of the way in a needle, which was daft. So let's come in and let's go in with the fuchsia. Let's not go back to the fuchsia, but we will go in with the fuchsia. So no, I'll need to. That's why I brought out all these off cut bits, just because I thought I'll need it. So that's five by seven. So let's go four and three quarters by six and three quarters which is going to give me that layer there the reason that i know already i've gone for this one is thinking with the frame that i'm going to pop it in afterwards the actual aperture of the frame and actually i'm going to bring it in i've got a blank frame here now this actual aperture it is about um it's about six by eight in inches. So I've just come in a quarter of an inch all the way around. So that's how I know that's the, the size that I've gone for. So that's where I've started it off. So I've gone in with that one. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of watercolour card. Because I want an additional bit of texture. But also I'm going to do a little bit of faux bleaching too. So grey is five by seven. The 
fuchsia is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So the watercolour card, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go four and a half by six and a half. So that's then going to give me my layer for inside the middle just here. So I'm going to move all that out of the way just now. What I'm going to do for now as well, let's take my die because I'm going to cut the frame uh, actually let's let's not let's do our inking first so i'm going to go in with the raspberry ripple so this is from our duet ink pad so we're going in with the raspberry ripple here and i'm going to go in with the blending brush as well so you can use your blending tools or your blending brushes and what we can then also do is i'm just going to set that up against my glass mat so that if i go out a bit further you, you can see if you don't know what I do I go further up that we can see just here and then I just pull I pull down towards me and I'm ready to go it saves me chasing my ink pad all the way around if I don't have my non-stick mat and then we're just going to go in and then we're just going to really start to ink this up now don't worry about getting any of your little uh, harsh lines if you go straight and direct with the brush don't worry about that because we're going to build it up plus it's very 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 easy to blend out so we're just going to go and then we're just going to ink up so we're just going to keep going all the way around so we're just going to build all that color up with the actual I was about to say fuchsia there, but the raspberry ripple. So let's really start to ink up that cardstock. Now, if I wasn't wanting to do any faux bleaching, I would be more than happy to just do this onto white smooth cardstock. It'd still look fab and you'll get a really lovely smooth application. But because I'm wanting to do a little bit of faux bleaching, I'm going to do it on my watercolour card. Plus, I also want that little bit of texture as well, that uh, tactile feel when it comes to the texture. So let's really start to ink this up. What I would say as well is, even if you still wanted that smooth feel with a little bit of faux bleaching, you can do a very light little spritz on your white multi-purpose card. Just don't do lots because you don't want to saturate it because, of course, that's not the intended card stock for anything that is water-based. But the reason, again, yes, I want that tactile feel with the watercolour card, but I'm going to do kind of a couple of layers of faux bleaching when it comes to spritzing. So let's go in. I don't want to get any of the oils from my finger transferred through so that's why i've just popped a little bit of scrap card underneath for me to hold down with and we're just going to work our way around and then i'm just going to go in and then just give all of that a really really nice blend like so it doesn't matter about the center because we're not going to see the center and then i'm going to bring in my spritz bottle now, because I use it quite a lot, you've maybe not seen it, I've just used an old uh, cleaning bottle. It's just an old cleaning bottle, thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly cleaned it out, and it's just water that's in there. You know, our water spritz or Spectrum Noir ones are great for when I'm on the road, but when I'm here at home and I'm using it quite often, it's nice just to have the largest one. Usually I spritz into my hand and flick. I'm not going to do that. I am just going to go at a distance. And then we're just going to give that a nice spritz. Now that's still then going to react, of course. So for this, what we can do is the longer we leave it, the more it's going to react and create essentially that faux bleach. I'm just going to keep it overhead. It's better for you just to kind of see it doing its thing than seeing my ugly mug. I can just talk you around. So we're just going to sit just for a few moments. The longer that you let that uh, sit, the more it's then going to pull up that colour. But then what it's also going to do is when it pulls up that colour, instead of leaving, you know, a, a light wash colour, what you're going to be left with is quite an intense white, which looks quite cool. But what I want to do is I want to let it do its thing. 
I want to take the excess off. I want to dry it. Then I want to go on with another light layer with the raspberry ripple and then do what I've just done again. So you're going to get a couple of different tones when it comes to that faux bleaching. So I've just got a couple of um, bits of kitchen roll or hand towel and I'm just going to dab that. Of course, you could do this on a bit of scrap cardstock and then that can then be uh, a little background that you might want to do or keep. So let's then take that off. I mean, look at that. I, oh, I just love it. I absolutely love it. So what we can then do is we want to stop anything from continuing to work when it comes to that full bleach. So what I'm going to do is we're going to then heat set that. So we're going to heat set that so this whole layer will be completely dry that I can then come along and build another layer of colour. Now you can then come along if you want to and then take uh, another colour but I'm just going to continue with that raspberry ripple because I want of course that fuchsia coming all the way through from uh, Heather's top. So let's heat set that up. So any time that you heat set you will start to bend and buckle your card. So all that you're then going to do is just turn it over, heat from the other side as well, flattening the fibres and then therefore flattening your card stock. So as that then starts to be up and dry, Let's turn that one around. So let's just make sure that's lovely, nice and dry. Do you know something? I would easily pay for a pack of cardstock with those kind of designs on it. And I've just created it myself. Fab, isn't it? Absolutely fab. Right. So let's just flatten that out like so and then let's do that again now i'm not going to go really strong like i've done before but we are going to come along and we are going to then um add more color but you'll still start to see that model design in the background so let's take i'm going to be careful i don't want to try i want to try and not crinkle the edge of my cardstock so Less, uh, less haste, less haste, more speed. I think that's it. I think that's the phrase, isn't it? So we're going to go around the edges like so. So we're just going to ink up. Still using the raspberry ripple. You can chop and change if you want to. So let's go. I've got a little kink in the top of that card, so I'm going to push my brush against that kink. Like so. And then, although I've gone round with an additional layer of ink, that's still lovely. That background, background is still really lovely, but I want to do another little bit of spritz. Now I'm not going to affect that initial layer because I've heat set it, I've dried it, it's done. So therefore it's just then going to give us an additional layer. So do a spritz. We're going to let that set again. And then what I can do is let's set that just to the side for a moment. Let's dry this because what we can do is we can then start to cut one of the other layers that we've got here so let's let's set let that set actually do you know what i'm going to stop it now i don't want any more setting or full bleaching so press that in let's bring that in a bit better so you can see it so we're going to bring that in Press that in, hold that in, like so. 
and then we've got an additional layer over the top oh my gosh i just blink and adore that forget how fun it is playing with inks i watch you know i watch jan and then i watch yesterday which would have been tuesday the 10th of october i was actually behind the scenes at crafters tv and um I was watching Leanne doing the mixed media and it was just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So there we go. Right. I'm happy. Really, really happy with that background here. So I created my own background and that was the Duet Ink Pad Raspberry Ripple. So let's give it a little waft and then just let that dry the rest of its time. So let's take, do you know what, if you went in with your shimmer spray, then your, even your, your shimmer one, that would look fab. So let's take that one. So do you know what would, oh, do you know what would have been really good to use? The Mermaid Dreams collection. I'm so lucky that I've got my hands on the Mermaid Dreams collection. And that would be really, really good to use. Nice colours. Could use the Mermaid Dreams. Could use the... I knew there was a way to knock that. How my guillotine is not in bits. The amount of times I knock it over. Uh, Mermaid Dreams. Mermaid dreams would be lovely. How many times can I say mermaid dreams? I mean, these these colours are just for not as you can see. I've not opened my set yet, but you know, going in with the the sea glass as well, that would look lovely. Or the ocean song. Oh, we could always do a little bit of what Leanne done, couldn't we? Pearlescent, yeah. Oh, nice. Kind of wait to delve into all of that so anyway yeah memory dreams let me get that out of the way for now because that's not what we're focusing on craig right so that's that's all done and that's all done so that's now our main layer that we've got here so we've got that layer however what i want to do is it's just falling into the fuchsia it's going back into the fuchsia. Sorry, I couldn't help that. So what I want to do is I want to lift that. Now, keeping in mind, this is going to end up going into a photo frame so I can get away with a lot of layers to this one. So all that I'm just doing here is I'm just going in, remind myself, four and a half by six and a half. So I'm going in and just cutting lightly that's just a little bit bigger a little bit bigger i need to trim there like so let's flatten that sometimes it's easier just to measure from the back so i think that would be fine i might need to do a little bit of trimming well i will need to do a little bit of trimming once it's on but yeah that gives me the indication that i've got a nice little light white frame all the way around which is then going to lift it that little bit more so that's great that's that one so let's go and let's do our cutting now so let's go in with the die so let's go in with that picture that gorgeous friend heather and a beautiful curie wee one lula and i'm going to pop that over the top so I'm using the smallest rectangle. So I'm just going to get that so it's quite near the top. And I'm going to centralise that as well. Make sure I don't get any of the, the white photo paper. Let's take that one. And then just tape that down. So I'm going to make sure that I'm taping out of the frame. Because I don't want any of the low tack tape to catch the photo paper inside. So we're going to then take our next one so we're also going to be adding our own additional mats and layers so we're going to be building on these two rectangles that are already here so let's trim that 
and let's move that. So if I then trim, move, let's get myself sorted and tape all of that. If this is one of the very first videos of mine that you've seen and you wonder what that is, I'm just trying to use up all of my washi tape. I've got so much washi, washi tape and I know there's great ways and things you can do to use it, but I am, um, that's what I'm doing. So that's what that is. What I'm also going to do as well, I'm just going to take a scrap bit of card because I don't want the actual photo of the three of us. I don't want that to, to either catch or stick onto the opposite side. I think I'm going to have to get myself new junior plates. I've not, not hooked up the camera from up ahead. Uh, and actually, I might just might just jump to the midi. I know many of you seen these dies cut no problem whatsoever. Oh, not no problem whatsoever when it comes to the midi. But what we can do is we can do that anyway. Just show you. So we can then take the photo out there and in there. And then so don't need that. Carefully take that off as well so that's that one let's set that there so also what i'm going to do i'm going to do what i've done with the background here so remember i given i gave myself a light white it's just here at the side there matte and layer so i'm going to do that so we're lifting the the picture up against the fuchsia and then the fuchsia we're going to do it on a little bit of grey so we're just elevating the layers. So let's get the guillotine in, move that out the way, move that out the way. So I'm just going to check the photo of us. So it's just over two and a quarter. I'm going to cut it to the nearest quarter of an inch and then trim. So cut that to two and whatever that was there. So I might just need to trim that there. Maybe just a little slither. Slither at a time. Let's hold that in again. Just a tiny, tiny slither at the base there. Perfect. So then that's really going to elevate the... Uh, from the fuchsia but what it also does as well even although it's just it's light and it's delicate it's picking out because Lula's socks are quite visual in the photo and you can see that they're white it's just picking out the white even when it comes to the white when it comes to my my t-shirt as well so it's just these little nuances these little touches you know it just it, it helps it adds have a look when it comes to the picture or it could be a topper it could be an image whatever it is if you're unsure of colors but you know there's an image you want to go with then just pick out colors pick out um i would say in total i would i would never tend to go more than three colors i uh, tend to stick to around about two but three more than happy using three so i'm going to do the same now with our die cut rectangle i'm now going to give that a layer though with the gray and it's just a very thin light layer so it's just a delicate gray layer so that's that there and then that will then go into there so of course this will now keeping in mind we're going to have the frame around it that's then going to sit there. So pulling all of those colours together, really making it stand out. But it works. And that's the key thing. The key thing is it works. Right, let's go in now to our frame. So for this one, depending on the size of your photo, you know, you can be using the inner frames over the photo. Or, of course, you can then cut them cut the photo maybe a little bit smaller so die cut that pop it in whatever color gray maybe the fuchsia and then die cut your photo smaller and just overlay that over the top um 
actually, do you know something? I might do that. So I might cut cut into the white, so then that's going to then give me that layer there. And then trim this photo a little bit smaller to fit into there. Might actually might actually do that. Right, let's put that thought just to the side for now. Let's go in with our mainframe. And we're going to want to use the fuchsia. I'm going to use the I'm going to use the fuchsia. We're going to do a drop shadow, shock horror. And I'm thinking definitely well, definitely the fuchsia. And I was thinking grey, now I'm thinking white. Again, just pulling in that white work. Let's uh, decide in a moment. Let's bring in my midi. Let's bring it in. Run it through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come close to the edge of this cardstock just so that I can still down the line use this outer actually. Now let's do it in the middle because then that's going to give me that aperture frame which I can use elsewhere down the line. So whether it's your MIDI, your Junior, your OG, your G2, it's going to work within all of them. Of course any other die cutting machine just size dependent. And then let's take, I knew it was going to happen, my folder is bent and I've got about do you know what it is it's because I've not even cleaned it out from the last time when I was prepping with it um I can't, I can't remember what I was about to say there yeah I've got loads of midi folders I bought loads just the other week there I think I think as well I don't know about you is you know as I've said we're very we're very very lucky. There's many items that we get from Crafters Companion if we've got shows and we're prepped with and that. And there is times that I'll get some mini midi folders. I think it goes with anything, isn't it? That when it's your own, you're more stingy, aren't you? Because this is actually one of my Gemini midi folders that I've paid for. I want to get as much use out of it before I have to discard it. So let's go. And now we've got lots of little swirls within this one. So we're just going to take our time. And feed out all of these bits. Most of the bits stay within the die anyway. Let's take that. Pop these bits. Some of these little bits you could do little bits of paper piecing, selective paper piecing as I say. So we've got that. I can keep that for another time. Let's pop that out. I'm going to keep those hearts because I'll probably use them are handy to use. Let's bring in that die again and let's bring in a piece of white cardstock. Just going to use the white multi-cut. That's always my go-to when it comes to a real strong white. I'm going to cut it this way this time. See if that's going to help. Do you know something? There's a full there's a brand new folder right and I mean right at the side of me. through. Is that going to be cut enough? Just, mm, I don't know, right. Craig, the time has come. Change folder. Right. Keep those hearts as well, just in case I use them. I'm going to bin that just yet because there is still some use out of it. But let's go 
in. Print's falling over. Let's go in with the folder. I think I've used it. Actually, I'll be completely honest with you. I think this is, and I genuinely mean accidentally, gone in my craft bag from the studio. So it's not, it's not mine. I don't know if I've slotted that right in, but let's go for it. If not, if I've got any little offcut, if it moves slightly, then I'll just cut it again. So let's take that out. Yes, it's just slid and no more. Typical. Typical. Right. At least it's working perfect this time. All right, let's get in another fresh. I've not got a bit that's quite the size that I need now. Drop any of that excess away. Flip and rotate our plates. Let's run that through. Just bring it back through. And I actually think this white will look even more striking than a grey layer. That's a drop shadow. Just that contrast against the raspberry ripple. So let's go in with these bits. Could even foil this on the foil press. That would look fab. I will be doing some tutorials when it comes to the foil press. There we go. So let's work our way in. I do have my dye brush at the side, but I don't know why. I just find this so therapeutic. And as you guys know, I don't edit these videos. Whatever gets filmed goes out. So you just need to bear with me. Let's come in, last end. Let's carefully pop that one out. And that last one, typical, that last one's all Caught in, I don't want to pull or tug it out. There we go. That's it. So we've now got these ones. So we've now got the fuchsia. And it would be the white and that drop shadow. See, now I don't know. Now I think the grey might be better. Let's cut a grey anyway. Let's cut one, because it won't go to waste, it'll get used at some point. Let's pop these, and there is absolutely no harm, if you're unsure about colour combination or exact, uh, exact colour layer, even although well, there's one of these, the grey or the white, I'm not going to be using, and there's no harm in that. Just pop it in the packaging at the back. You can use again, or if you've got somewhere specific that you do like to use, then of course you can do that. Pop it there at me. Let's take that. Gosh, what's going on with my MIDI? I may have to buy one of the new raspberry ones. Right, let's take that one out now. Wait, see, I bet you this is then just crossed over slightly. And it has a bit. Let's, uh, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. 
Right, before I pop all of them out, let's just have a look and see what layer am I going to go with. I'm going to go white. Or am I going to go grey? white yeah white yeah definitely white like the white so that's given us all of our layers that we can see just here but I am going to do let's bring in so I'm going I'm to try what I said so let's cut piece of cardstock to that size that I need. There. And the arches are the same. Pretty much. Yep. Again, another one that's just trial and error. And if I don't use this, then don't need to worry because I can still use this white layer again. I do have another photo as well, cut to size. So at least if I do dis try it, cut the photo, I'm not happy. I've got one already here. Let's take what have I done with my new folder now. Here we are. I don't know if I'm having a trust in day with my midi today. That's not my midi, I think it's just, it can't be my folder, it must be my midi. To be fair, I use it that often. I wouldn't be surprised if the pressure is just lacking ever so slightly. Oh yeah, I've had it since it first, well way before it first launched. Definitely signs for a new raspberry one. Right. So let's bring... So what was I saying? That. That. And then... So I don't really... I don't want the... F I like the idea. I just wish my photo was a little bit further up. So what I could do is let's adapt it ourselves. So let's take out that heart there. Um So there, because I don't want that heart to color uh, cover Lula. We want to see Lula. We don't want to cover her. So we've created our own custom top there. So that can be moved up a little bit. I can trim down here at the bottom. You can see just here. So nothing stopping you from trimming your die cuts. So I like that one. Yep, I'm going to go with that one. So that will then go kind of as far up as I can. So I just need to trim down here. Perfect. Right. So let's start. To assemble now I might or not might I will I'll add maybe little gems or pedals or something like that but we'll do all of that at the end let's take these bits now I'm going to be careful and delicate when I do this because I do want glue on all of this but I don't want it to squidge out too much on the photo so therefore let's do what you usually do and then either on the craft mat glass mat or I just do it on the back of my hand I'm going to dab off a lot of the excess glue and I 
Right, let's get that out of the way for now. And then take that excess off. I'm going to go as far as I can to start with. Let's What I should have done as well, I've got one of those little HP sprockets that I think cuts to round about this size, cuts, prints to round about this size. I just want to move that in just a little bit central there, that's, that's what I'm wanting. So I can trim that edge as well. That's fine, yeah. That's better. So I'm just going to do a little bit of trimming just around the bottom and the top there. So let's trim that away. And this frame that I've done here, of course, you could then be using things such as your your ink pads, raspberry ink pads, raspberry ripple, that's what I mean. So there's that, and then that will go nicely into the middle here. So while I've got the glue at the side of me, let's take our glue and do our drop shadow. I'm going to do the same again, I'm just going to sketch around however this time i'm not overly concerned about any little bits of glue that then just seep out because but well, we're doing a drop shadow and i'm doing it on the glass mat so any little excess will just seep out on the glass mat and then i can just wipe it off i'm gonna take all the way round and i know i say this quite a lot certainly when it comes here but Absolutely use your own choice of adhesive. You want to use your dotty tape runner, you can. Your spray, you can. If you want to be using double-sided adhesive sheets, you can do. I do like my tacky glue. And then, now there is a right and wrong way. So just bear that in mind. Come in here with that shadow. And once I'm happy with that, we're going to press that down. Alright, let's add all of these initial layers together. So where's my tape? Here we go. So all all these layers, this layer with the photo, the layer with the fuchsia, and the layer with the grey, they are going to be layered up with double sided tape and then on the back of the grey I'll add some foam pads to add some height so let's bring that in there and then we're going to come in to these ones nicely ease that into place here I'll probably put a few little petals or something in that framework and I like that because we've now changed that frame we've gone from having the heart top and bottom we've now got that heart at the bottom do you know what I'm going to do right now let's put in our glue and then let's go in with that Oh no, it's not that size, is it? Um, I'm just going to take that off just now. I'm going to come back with this die. Let's take cardstock. Uh, oh, let's just cut the whole thing. Let's just cut the whole thing. I'll just bring in my mini. 
really only one in the heart. So let's take that one out. I just want to make sure that's going to be the right one to fit in, which it is. Bring in the glue again and then pop that in there. Perfect. If you've got your glitter glues, you might want to use that. I might do that as well. We'll just wait and see. So that's that layer. So let's bring in my foam pads so we can have this one ready. And here we go. So these are three bell foam pads. If you're wanting to know. So that's our photo layer in our photo frame done. So that can sit there. Let's take now these layers. So let's bring in our tape. Now for this one, because we've wet it and we've dried it, we've wet it and we've dried it. I'm going to actually, I'm going to use my tacky glue or your red liner tape. Both are going to work really well. Your tissue tape will work. I just want to give it that extra strength. That extra stability so therefore tacky glue or red liner tape Let's bring these layers in now remember this is that really really I don't tend to matte layer side on but because of the way that it's bowing I'm gonna and I still need to do a little bit of trimming afterwards when it comes to the white layer so going on give myself light little white matting layer let's hold that in and then let's press i'm going to let that sit just for a moment i like how how that's how that's going how that's turning out so let's come in with these ones so let's Bring that in there and that in there. What have I done on my tool? There we go. I'm going to layer this one up onto the grey. I need to bring in a card blank so I'm going to go I'm going to go five by uh, seven by seven and then I'm going to trim it down by trim it down by five that's five by seven isn't it so let's do five and a half five and a half by seven and a half in my own folder Oh no, I can't do that because it's. I need 8x8 eight eight to do that. Oh, Craig, you're numpty. You're numpty. Let me just line that up. And the card blanks that I use are sticks to, and they're so, so smooth. So, therefore, all these off cut, off -cut bits. I would keep because I can stamp onto them and even colour onto them. But good for stamping your sentiments. So let's give that a burnish. Let's then come in with our base layer and add that on. Take that off. And when it comes to that layer that I've used, the Raspberry Ripple, you know, you can go in with things such as your, your flay. Actually, will we do that? I think we should. Right, let's pop that on into there. Let's bring this in and let's neaten this up. Neaten it up just a little bit. Great. 
and just a very, very delicate white border. That just means it's then going to stand out from that fuchsia, which I'm wanting. And then, of course, that will go like that. And then that will go like that. But let's take... I'm thinking... I want glitter paste or do I want gilding flakes? Glitter paste. If I use glitter paste. Um, I knew that was going to happen. I was going to. And it's dropped down the side of my desk. Right, I'll get it later. Right, I've got a pinky tone. So do there. Peony bloom. So I've got the peony bloom. So I'm thinking. I am thinking. I've not, as you can see, I've not used that yet. So I need. Where's my. Where are they? There we go. Take that. I want a brush. I think I'm going to brush it on. So let's give that. If you find it's gone cloudy at the top, all that that is is just the glue separating. Give it a really, really good mix up. Take that off here, and then where am I going to do it? Let's do it here. I'm just going to do it onto my glass mat, into the corners, and essentially, kind of what I'm doing. If you've seen Leanne yesterday, I'm not doing through any stencils or anything like that. I'm just going to go corner to corner. Let's take some of that off the lid just here. Over the top, like so. That should be more than enough. So it's just going to give it another direction and another layer. So, so I'm kind of going corner to corner and I'm pulling it in. So that was our peony, peony bloom. So it's from our Spectrum Noir glitter pastes. Now what I would say as well, I'm not going to do it just now because I don't want to leave you, but I'm just going to wrap that up in baby wipe for now keep that damp and then I can dry that or wash it and dry it once I finish this video so let's take my let's try that off let's just give that a nice little heat set you notice as well I done it after I put it onto the white backing because that's because I hadn't planned on doing it so you can do it before you do the white back in. And then there we go. Gorgeous shimmer that you can see here. And let's add that. Do I want that? Actually, do I want that? No, let's keep that flat. I'm going to keep that flat. Like so, work our way, because as well, it's um, the card's stretched. I'm going to put my tape all the way around. 
it's usually there's never any rhyme or reason as to why I go straight on or I go all the way round. But on this occasion, the reason I'm going all the way round is just because the card's bend and buckled. Just stabilise that. And press that in here. Really, really liking how this is turning out. Let's bring that in and that in. So do I want to go further up and do... I'm not, I'm not going to do any sentiment, anything like that. Because as I say, although I'm showing you this on a frame, on a card, it can go into a frame. So I'm going to go in with that one. So this one I'm going to lift as well. I'm going to look on the foam pads. Like so. Let's add that in. But because we've got the watercolour cardstock, because we've got the Raspberry Ripple Duet ink pad, because we've got the glitter paste, what I'm going to do just go over a little bit tacky glue the foam pads will stick to the cardstock but i do have a feeling that maybe after a period of time it'll start to prise away so therefore i'm going to give it a helping aid by pressing adding the glue so that's now given us that depth that we can see here and then we can go on with this one and then we can take that off here. That's then just going to etch into there. And then I've got these hearts. So I can do as if I'm kind of like scattering them. So one there. One there. And then one there. And then if I do one there, where's my die? I need another couple. Or do I want a grey as well? No, I like I just like all white. I like all white. Where have I? Oh, here we go. So what I'm going to do within this one is because I'm only wanting the two hearts. So let's take that. I'm going to tape it. So it doesn't move. And I'm just going to overlay them underneath the hearts. I don't want the full frame cut. I only want the heart. Let's bring that back in. So we're going to have three. So we've got three into three. Like so. I'm just going to have them so that they're just tucking underneath as well. So how does that... So if I go... That way... Like so. Yeah, that's better. Let's bring that down a little bit more. Like so. Obviously, I will secure them with glue just in a minute. I'm just wanting to position them as in where I think. So I'm happy with that. So again, we're continuing that white work all the way throughout too. Right, let's bring in the glue. So four of them I'm going to keep flat with tacky glue. And then the single one, top and bottom, I'm going to add that on with a foam pad. Giving it extra dimension. 
But what's lovely is this would still look equally lovely if you have it completely flat with no lift of foam pads or glue gel, depending on what you use. So let's take that one. Let's add that to there. And just like our border frame, I'm going to add just a dot of tacky glue into there. Let's bring that one in to there. And that one in to there. Can't remember what direction I had it in. I think that's fine. Like so. Let's bring in that one. Let's take in foam pad lift. I'm going to put that one in there. Hold that in. And I still, I'm still wanting, um, I've got pink pearls. Perfect. There we go. Fuchsia pearl from an old craft club. I've got enough tiny small ones. Yeah, so let's go. I'm going to do one, two, three. And... Do one, two, I'll sort the line up just in a second, three, move that in, I'm going to move them just a little bit closer together. Even them up. So, uh, let's just nod that in. <coughs> Down here, one, two, three. One, two, and three. Like so. And I need to learn to stop here, but I know what I'll, I want to take. Where's my tiny, tiny little butterfly? Now, pro, let's try grey. Let's try grey for this. so slightly just down there yep just that one butterfly in the bottom corner there press that in and then there we go with our Butterfly bouquet border nesting dies. Showing you how you can make that into a card. I know I usually put an insert in, but I'm not going to at this moment in time. Because what I can also show you then is then you can then turn it. Now, of course, you wouldn't do it onto a card blank, you would just do it onto a piece of card stock, and that is then brought into a piece of home decor that you can see just here. How fab does that look? Now, in actual fact, 
your mount within this frame, this was just from Asda, the mount in this frame, that light ivory colour actually works so, so well with Lula's top there that you've got. So the colour combination brought together just finishes off perfectly. You've got the fuchsia from Heather's top, you've got the grey from my top, you've got that white work that's just picked out from Lula's socks and even my top there. And then you've then got the actual mount, which is just pure coincidence, works really, really well with the top that Lula's got on. So whether you're using your border nesting dies in a way to, of course, create your cards or your card blanks, you can add a sentiment, die cut sentiment if you want to, or you're going to use them when it comes to anything such as your home decor frames, whichever way, they look quite fab. So hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you liked that one. I certainly had fun when it came to creating that one. Um, you can be doing that with your own photos, of course, with any of the die sets, any of the dies mixing and matching. You can be changing away if you want to, of course. Maybe you want to die cut a few of the layers with your white cardstock, layer them up a few times, two, three times, mount them onto your mount board or your canvases, something like that, and do what Leanne had done when it comes to the memory collection yesterday, which, of course, yesterday was Tuesday the 10th of October. That's just if you're wanting to know when it comes to watching this back. But that was all about the, the launch of our brand new border frame nest and dies that i'm going to be launching tomorrow thursday the 12th of october on hobby maker i'm on the one o'clock show with these ones with rosie i'm going to be back at three o'clock once again with another hour of the wild at heart that's the one that leanne is launching today on hobby maker wednesday the 11th of october and then i'm going to be be back again at six o'clock and seven o'clock on hobby maker so it's two hours straight but technically it is still two different shows so we've got a totally tiffany and then we've got our large word die are large uh, word cut dies so these ones here the one large word dies they are um they're brand new to the uk so they have been out in america but they've not been out in the uk so it's lovely to actually have them and i did do a tutorial the other week there with the mint and the brown that thank you i'm sure was it thank you it was thank you wasn't it uh you'll find that just uh, a couple of tutorial videos back that you can always go back and have a look at as well but yes that is tomorrow myself on hobby maker this is then just giving you that little sneak peek first chance look of these dies right at the start of this video i gave you that look as to all the different permutations as you can be using the frames with the die without the die without the inner die with the inner die just the framed all the different ways so you can always go back again and have a look at that but i will see you tomorrow on hobby maker thursday the 12th of october at one o'clock going to be on at three o'clock six o'clock and seven o'clock as well but till the next time do remember while you're here watching this video you know hit that bell so you're going to be notified whenever i pop up a tuition video and then of course hit subscribe so that of course uh, well you subscribe to this as to your youtube as well and then give me the thumbs up if you like this video or if you want to i'm sure you like this demonstration i know i absolutely loved it as well with heather and gorgeous lula too right i will see you again the next time bye